Hi, I'm Don Bodan from SampleLibraryReview.com, and today we're going to be checking out Talent, Baltic Voices and Strings by Orchestral Tools. Now, I just got a pre-release copy of this instrument. I've been playing around with it for about a day or two, thanks to UUZ, Thomas Burdinsky, Sonus, and David Gottschalk, who commented on this week's deal compressor that they wanted to see Talon. So, because it's on this pre-order special promo price right now, I'm getting this video out just for you guys. Orchestral Tools have headed to Estonia to capture the Estonia Philharmonic Chamber Choir and the Talon Chamber Orchestra. And spoiler, there's something really special about Talon. There's a very unique quality to the music that comes from this region, and they've done an amazing job of capturing these quiet, atmospheric instruments that have a silky and emotive lush room tale. In today's video, I'll go over the facts, sharing what the library is made up of. I'll play a demo in which I used the library extensively to get a feel for how it sounds and responds. And at the end, I'll wrap it all up with my final thoughts on the instrument and who I think this will be good for. Talon Downloads is 43 gigabytes. That's down from like 90 some gigabytes using SignArc compression. It's recordings from the Estonia Philharmonic Chamber Choir with 16 singers and the Talon Chamber Orchestra with five violins, four violas, three celli, and two basses. In addition, they recorded two organs for a total of six different organ patches with multiple articulations for each. The library delivers 24-bit 48K patches that were all recorded in the St. Nicholas, which is St. Nicholas Church. It's got multiple mic positions and works in Orchestral Tools standalone sign player, which is free to download and VST AU compatible. Library will normally sell for 399 euros. It's on a special pre-order price right now until May 4th for 249 euros. I'll include links to take you straight over to Orchestral Tools in the description below. And before we dig in, listen to all the different um, articulations through, oh, we're going to play through just about all the instruments so you can get a real good feel of the library. I did a mock-up trying to use different articulations, get a feel for how the instrument responds. I think it really pushed me and inspired me to be a little more delicate. So as I play through pieces and parts of this mock-up, uh, I'll, I'll express some of my thoughts along the way. Now, you noticed I let it linger there because I wanted you to hear that room sound because it's, I think it's just lovely there. Uh, in addition to using Talon, I also did use the brand new uh, Orchestral Tools Patina, and this is a uh, specialized piano. Really nice, a lot of creative sound, really beautiful sound to it. I'm going to go ahead and, and break down some sections so you can hear how these instruments interact, and then we'll talk a little bit about mic positions and whatnot before we dive into a first look of playing through 
the different instruments and their articulations. So for, for this first run through, I'm just going to mute everything but the choir. Now, listening back to that, I think one of the keys for getting the sound that I loved was to play with the mic positions. So I'm going to go ahead and play just this female choir. And I used this and thought of this as my alto line. And I led the piece with that. So I'll just play that by itself soloed so you can hear that one alone. And then we'll change microphone positions so you can get a feel for what those are doing. And so right there, I think you can hear, I pushed that hall room. I pushed that surround uh, to get that because there's something about being in those spaces and just in the, the loveliness of the, that, those kind of church buildings, you just get, the sound is just rolling over itself. It's just a, a wonderful kind of tail, and I wanted to push that. So you could hear here with just the spot mic now. So just flipping through a few of those, I think you start to understand um, what the library is capable. You can get that very detailed, uh, not really dry, but that immediate sound to the vocals with that spot, as well as the strings. We'll look at those in a minute. And then once you play with those trees and the surround, you start to get that rolling sound, which uh, always reminds me of um, like a liquid, I guess is the best way to describe it. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the what I considered the tenor uh, line so you could hear the differences in that uh, mics based on a lower male voice here. So 
So there's our spot mics. We start to get a little bit more space with our close AB. I think that starts to give us a real feel for how the different positions will lend themselves to your mix. Until I started really tweaking and dialing in a sound, uh, I thought it was nice. Then I dialed this in and I thought, oh, there it is. And I'm sure from each uh, project to project, um, I'm going to find myself wanting something a little bit different in the sound. When we go to uh, take a listen to the strings, By working up again uh, another uh, mix sound, there's so much space and stereo field, but so much depth uh, to each of the individual parts there. And when that bass kicks in here... The idea that you've got this lush high end and then when the low comes in and just fills up the bottom, that makes a big difference. The other thing I did use for the instrument is a couple organs to double some parts. I'll mute those and play through those for a second. And once again, I focused on that room sound. Without further ado, let's dive into a first look. All right, just a note here as we dive into a first look. This is the pre-order version. Orchestral Tools was kind enough to send me it over early. I've got it downloaded. I've been playing with it. It sounds amazing. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll just load up the female choirs. I'm just going to play through everything the library has so you can hear what it sounds like right out of the box. Mute my mic for a little bit.
Yeah, boy. Uh, I, I, I'm probably going to go over this um, in the other part of the video. So you'll, you know, there's different mic positions you can select up. I'll probably go through that uh, a little later if I haven't already. We're going to play through all the articulations. That was the sustains with legatos. As I might have mentioned, the legatos are really buttery smooth. I love the sound of the hall. It's not super agile. That's just uh, the nature of the way it performs, but I think it lends itself towards a certain style of writing, which doesn't need to be real agile. Moving on here, I'm going to listen to just the, the sustains. And now we'll move on to the sustain ums. Now is the legato version. We're going to skip the sustain ums because we've already heard that. Here's the vibrato longs. That one will take some care in your changing of dynamics to get it to nice, be nice and smooth. Some dynamic long. I absolutely love the way that you do these random syllables, the way that they're mixing up the round robins. If you do overlap your notes, like you're playing legato, you'll get the same syllabants. If you leave a little separation, you get the next syllable. And then they have that in uh, short versions as well. I'm going to mute my mic so I can play it a little more delicately. Then they've thrown in this random longs. And a random longs atonal. Moving now on, on to the male choir.
And I like the humanness in these samples. You can really hear some of the singers start just milliseconds before or after the other singers. Play through the presets real quick. something really nice about those dynamic longs, both female and male choir, just the evolving nature of it. randoms might come in useful. They're definitely not something I go to regularly. Jumping into the strings, let's have a listen to these. Loading up the chamber violins. Very buttery smooth. Again, uh, not super agile, uh, but just lush. And the specialty uh, soft sustains, really nice.
So even though we've only got staccato uh, as a short, no other short variations, no pizzicato, um, it's got a nice bite to it in the violin. And then what I think these strings really start to become beautiful here is these dynamic wave articulations. You can really revel in the, the sound of the, the hair on the bow and how it resonates in the room on the Fagalot sustains and the Fagalot portos and shorts. All right, moving on to the violas. And then the dynamic waves.
Yeah, those fragile Solpont and Soltostos are, are really nice. So delicate. So let's do the Chimbercelli. Yeah, those are really nice. Let's jump into the bases. Slightly less articulations for this one.
And here's where things kind of become like a mm, surprise gift. Going into the record Talon, it sounded like they didn't plan on recording organs, but once they got into the St. Nicholas Hall, or church, I guess, they uh, saw these two organs and they went ahead and captured them. Go ahead and listen to the other main church organ. And you couldn't end the video on a much more upbeat note there. So what are my thoughts here about Talon? Well, I think that it really does have this incredible sound. It's so delicate and detailed. I found it inspiring me to step back from being so bombastic in some of my writing um, and to really concentrate on the quiet moments 
I think they've designed this specifically for underscore. And although you could probably come close if you cobbled together a number of different existing libraries, I don't think anything would gel quite the same way because of the detail, the resonance, and the tail of the room. The sound and the space are really fantastic. And they've provided a well thought out set of articulations for a specific style. Now what the library does lack is having a full blown list of articulations. The shorts are minimum at that. The legatos are not very agile. And for adding these two organs, I believe they even said it was just as a, an afterthought. Like they got into the space and they thought, oh, here's two organs, let's hear them. And they went ahead and sampled them. For having those two organs in this library as like an afterthought, these are really lush and beautiful. The library, I feel, gets the most out of those mic mixes. Once you start playing with those different mic positions, I really favored having a lot of surround so I could hear more of the room. Uh, I don't know if you've spent much time in halls like St. Nicholas in Gothic churches, but there's just such a beautiful rolling of the performers' voices and strings in those kind of rooms, and they've managed to catch that really well. Talon definitely isn't going to be something I'd recommend for everyone, but it's focused on a very specific kind of scoring designed around these kind of scores we've heard with this Baltic singing string sound. And for that, it's unbeatable. Those are just my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you think of the library. Please comment below. Let me know your thoughts about Talon. Is this something you're interested in? Something you've already pre-ordered and you just wanted to check it out here? Love to hear from you and what you think about the library. If you haven't already, please like the video, share it with your friends, or subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And be sure to head back around on Fridays for the weekly deal compressor show where we recap the new releases and special offers that make our radar.